All right, let's get it started. Thank you guys for tuning in to the fifth installment of the community call of Rally. This is our first one of February, which is really exciting. So we had a really exciting first month of uh, the year. And so we're excited to kick off the second month of the year. Today's agenda, just to keep in mind before we get started, please keep your mics on mute. If you have a question, please put it in the chat and uh, we'll address it at the end. So we'll start with the agenda. Today's uh, looks like new creators gonna be heading over to Rob. Then we'll kick it over to Mike for KPIs as usual. And then we'll go to developer ecosystem with Ray. And then we'll round it out with Mahesh for the community proposals. And so we'll start with Rob, if you want to start with new creators. Hey y'all, happy Friday. All right, so first step, we're going to talk a little bit about Vibe. So Vibecoin la launched on the 22nd of January and to, to some pretty strong success. It's got over 90 supporters, about 100,000 in rally backing, and just about $32,000 in support volume. But rather than me talking about how, how great this has been, we've got got him on the line right now. Vibe, how you doing, man? Can, can you tell us about your, your coin launch and what community reception's been like? Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, just making sure, can you hear me right now? Perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's been great. When I first got into it, when you, when you contacted me the first time, I was like, yeah, it sounds really interesting. I wasn't really sure what to expect and all that stuff, but it's definitely been a really cool way to take my content with just like viewer interaction to be like, hey guys, if you want to support this, this way, this, that way, it's been another really cool way to just incorporate people to, you know, participate with everything. And uh, as yeah, you were talking about with like the, just the total amount of transactions and everything that's happened, it's been really easy to push it with something I've been running over the past couple of weeks with like these tournaments. It's like, it's been, it's like a video game. It's basically a bunch of free-for-alls. So it's, you know, you just give people a way to like become a part of the content more because it's like, oh, well now we can do this survival coin mixed in feature with now something that's going to be posted like the other incentive is like it gets posted on youtube and stuff like that so people will get to be part of the content and vibecoin is like a great way to incorporate people to do that and it gives them yeah. like trading stuff so could you tell us a little bit about the the ffa tournament and like how that went down what did you do for like yeah. qualifiers and uh, finals one? so to be specific but not go because i know i kind of ramble on sometimes <laughs> so i'm gonna try not to do that but basically what i did was i had like five days of, of free-for-all tournaments and i had one like extravaganza day where it's like the grand finals it's a major day and then i had like a, a few days that built up towards that so the days that built up towards it i had basically people could do a smaller vibu coin donation to secure their spot in the free-for-all for an overall prize of extra vibu coin and the, the specific numbers were six to six donate six vibu coins to donate to get into it and then if you won you got 24 back so a lot of people were, they thought that idea was pretty cool. And then also, like I was saying before, they get a chance to also be casted by me in a very non-traditional version of the game. So it's like, oh, I'm going to be casted. It gets, it gets you on YouTube and I might even win Vibu Coin as a prize. It sounds like super exciting for people to do it. And the spots feel pretty fast, actually. Like as soon as I was like, all right, guys, it's starting in 30 minutes. Person, 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 donate, 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 donate. And it was like eight people just get in right away. So that's what I did for the daily ones. And then the other incentive I put in there was if you win, if you're actually the winner, you get seated automatically into the the final day. So more of a reward, I guess, for like the guy who wins. And then finally on the final day, it didn't have a, a limit. So the daily ones were limited by eight people, but the final day had no limit at all. So as many people that wanted to play could play. And the way it kind of went down was over the week, I was kind of like promoting it, advertising it, promoting it. But the way a lot of people work, especially, in, I guess, I don't know, maybe it's my stream specifically or just people in Twitch. They're not like the most like assertive to be like, I know I'm doing this in a week from now. So I'm going to immediately sign up right now. It was like I had about four signups throughout the week. And then on the day, it was like 16 people all signed up in a, in a matter of about 25 minutes before the event started. So we had a total of 20 people all into it. And then another incentive that people started talking about, which I thought is a great idea because it it's super casual the way we run it. But another incentive the, or that was pretty cool was people said if they if they wanted to, could they donate Vibu coin to me to just increase the prize pool to make it like higher stakes matches? And I was like, yeah, it sounds great. I mean, if we want to make the winners of this event get more Vibu coin, that's totally fine. And the the overall event started with a, the concept was was it was a ten Vibu coin donation to get into it. So twenty people did that, and then I was gonna give 
Uh, 105, 150 Vibu coin prize plus five additional Vibu coins per each person that entered after 10. So if we had 12 or yeah, 12 people or so, it'd be like 160, stuff like that. And the prize ended up being increased all the way up to, it was 300. So it was 150 for first and 90 for second place and 60 for third place was like the, the way I divvied it out. So I gave prizing to more than just the top guy. And yeah, people loved it. It was great. It was fun. Uh, it was smooth. I mean, the, the Vibucoin has nothing to do with specifically with like running StarCraft 2 tournaments, I guess, with like how smooth that was. So I don't really have to go into that. But yeah, everyone like, I feel like at first, my final opinion of this or how it went was at first when I first talked about it, people were kind of confused a little bit. But as soon as like a few days went by and we kind of internally, like me and Rob specifically talked about it and he helped me a lot to like figure out how I should kind of word things and like, even make like commands in the channel to be like, okay, you guys want to check it out? Go here, go here, go here. Made it super easy to like have the new guy who joined five minutes after I just explained it to now know what's going on as well. And everyone started learning what's going on really easy after that. And it went really smooth after we did that. Dude, again, congratulations on the success of the, the first Vibu coin tournament. Uh, yeah, so what, what, what are your future plans with, with Vibu coin? <laughs> what do you, what do you got in store, Dan? So I, like I said, people have been really, positively receiving the idea of it and a lot of people have already gotten they've already donated a lot of it already bought some of it i keep hearing the alerts go off daily but the plans i have for the future of it is basically i want to do some coaching stuff with it so i i, I here's what i do on my stream I, I run a few additional things that happen during the stream and they're just like additional content into the content that i normally make so Normally, day to day, I'm just streaming a game called StarCraft 2, which is fine. But I also add in sections of scheduled coaching and also sections of spontaneous replay analysis, which is like, it's like a casual form of coaching. It's just a lot of coaching, essentially. And I have, Vibucoin is now going to be an addition for me to be another format or like a, another just avenue that someone can purchase coaching lesson, essentially. So if they buy Vibucoin, donate it to me. That is their, that's like a ticket to, uh, an analysis or coaching. And I would say on average, I do about like five to six coaching lessons a week and maybe more like seven replay analysis a week. So there's quite a bit of them. And then also I, I was super swamped. I had a lot of stuff to do with the tournament. It was, it was great. It ran well, but it was super busy. So I was thinking tournaments, I would still do those, but maybe do those more like once a month instead of every week. Cause that would be a lot to do. Uh, so I'm probably like once a month, you know, month and a half or something every few weeks i'll throw a tournament out there and i'll run the i actually really like the format i ran with the last one so i'll keep that kind of style going i think it ran really well yeah and doing the like the, the shorter games in the end for the like final ffa qualifiers is really cool to have no the, yeah have the pacing kept it, up exactly it made it go a lot smoother because that, that could have taken like seven hours if i would have been like everyone's going to the end dude well thank you very much for for joining us on the rally community call i appreciate you man yeah man no worries Thank you, Vibe. I appreciate that. Thank you, Rob. Awesome. All right. And then up next, we also had Livy B launch last week. So StarCraft 2 has really been going gangbusters on the Rally platform. Livy B is an Australian gamer and cosplayer. She's super passionate about crypto. And you can see that in the way that her community has responded. Her chat in general would talk about like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And so launching Bcoin has gone extremely well for her. She's got 165 transactions and just about 184,000 rally coins backing already. That, that brings her to just about 60K in total support volume, which is insane. Bcoin has been leading the, the rewards chart this week, and Livy B is planning to also add some additional like paper VOD and paper post cosplay functionality as well. So be sure to keep an eye out on that one that's it for new creators awesome thank you rob we'll go ahead and kick it over to mike for the kpis all right so on the mainnet side we are currently at around 89.3 million rally in the circulating supply one thing we noticed is that if you go to coin gecko the number that shows on coin gecko um, is incorrect and if you hover over where the circulating supply is calculated that number if you actually do the math, it's correct, but for whatever reason, the number that they show right there, it doesn't actually add up. So 83.9, 89.3 million is uh, what you get when you do the math when you hover over on the CoinGecko uh, info button. 
19.9 million in total liquidity across our Uniswap and balancer pools. I attribute this mostly to increases in price in both the Rally Coin and Ethereum price. $871,000 currently in our community treasury. Obviously, we, we have a community treasury fundraise going on, so this is currently coming from just our YDVs. This is up, but up less than uh, it was last week, but still, still up 17% uh, week over week. And 61000 uh, in bridges in quite a lot. Last week was a little bit of a slower week because we didn't have any larger creators launch, so up significantly this week. As we move over to the side chain, you know, a lot of the numbers are all up. I attribute this mostly again to what Rob was just saying with the launch of Libby B and her 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 fan base that's actually pretty crypto literate. So a moderate increase in the rally backing creator coins, again also a moderate increase in average daily volume and number of coin holders. But as you can see, a significant increase in terms of buys uh, and converts. Uh, again, I think a lot of that went uh, over to Livy B during her launch. I think that's also uh, a good driver of the donations. And bridges out and redeems are down, which is, you know, that doesn't mean it's bad. I think that's actually not necessarily, a, I mean, I think it's a neutral thing. But good to see that bridges out in general are lower than bridges in this week. Awesome. We'll go and pass it over to uh, Ray for the key, for developer ecosystem, rather. Thank you. Yeah, so updates all over the place. I was hoping to get a demo of our, our one of our community tools, the, the dashboard for the rally bot up, but couldn't quite get the presentation ready. So I'll do that next week. But we've got it ready. You can register your server, your Discord servers. It's also got some new tools in it for deep linking. So there's some ways to to build a deep link in a in a UI and just put that on your page or connect it to a button in your Shopify or something like that. So there's some you know, very easy to use tools to generate ways to send users to the very place in, in Rally where they can purchase your creator coin to get it with the right message and the right amount and all of that stuff. So the we, we're kind of pairing the community tool UX with the user experience and the new features on the Rally site. So I'll, I'll give a demo of that next week along with the rest of the setup there. So you can kind of run some of the commands and do some things in, in there for your Discord server for the the creators who don't really want to be in the running commands world uh, for Discord. Other updates, we have some more bounties up and being worked on. I think we've got two or three that are active, two or three that are about to be uh, approved, sort of in QA. And they're, some of them are related to Discord and OBS still. <clears throat> I think we mentioned last week. But some are starting to branch out into other tools, and they're kind of giving us more ideas on other bounties to make that are not inside of Discord, Twitch, or specifically. So that's kind of an encouraging sign that the the people working on the ideas for current creators are spawning more ideas for you know, wider groups of creators. And they're not having to come directly from the, uh, the kind of the committee that makes bounties, which is a good sign for both community management and, and growth in the in the space. And we just have more people trying to work on problems for creators. It's kind of cool. I guess another thing to mention is we're sort of behind on on bounties. It's another, sort of another good sign. <laughs> we've we've built a new bottleneck where Phelps and I are chasing testing with the developers and QA cycles to make sure that the features work as as desired. And so we're going to be trying to grow out our community management on the dev side. We've talked about this before, but we have a candidate who's been helping us build some things and, and be a, a code reviewer. And we're going to put up a proposal to see if the community would like to add him as a semi-permanent fixture to to kind of represent the rally community in a dev capacity it'll be our first sort of ambassador community member that is an engineer by trade which is uh, something neat and something we've seen in other projects you know yearn grants uh, have developers on on the staff so we're excited about that and then oauth so features coming up rally the site is going to be providing authentication for users. I think we've talked about this on and off a few times, but that's on target for next week. And we're going to try to uh, make sure that the, you know, we have full documentation on how to register for that, sort of like you do for the webhooks. And now external developers can map the accounts of Rally users to, you know, whatever their local experience is and, and verify that identity. And that's a kind of a quality of life improvement for the developers that are kind of just map making that mapping now in a, in a more manual way, but it's also a platform for us to build a bunch of new stuff on. So that's how we're going to get rights. That's how we're going to get account balances. 
all those sorts of things out into the hands of developers outside of Rally. So it's exciting. And then the last note is sort of a, I guess a boring task for documentation, but now that we have a big cluster of community tools brewing, we want to make sure that it actually gets in the hands of creators. There's not too many creators using the community tools right now. And there also has been some confusion rightfully so on like, why is there two discord bots that do similar things? We have some overlays that kind of do similar things and some are built by the community and some are built by rally. And so what, what we're trying to do internally at rally is establish what we are and aren't tackling on our roadmap for the product side, like the stuff that creators and fans use so that we can, we can lay that out and have kind of a clear set of boundaries and then also start to build playbooks for community tools. And, and so those things get mapped to any creators that are new to join, or maybe trying to reinvigorate a feature set or, or a new use case that have been on rally for a while, but didn't have the tools. So sort of making sure that the, the account management teams and the community members are up to date on all that stuff and feel like they know why you'd use a community tool versus the rally product set. Or, or, or just be aware there is a new tool and how it works. So we're working on that on the dev community side of sort of humanizing the tech that's being built. Awesome. So. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate that. We're going to go and round it out with Mahesh with the community proposals from this past week. Yeah. So I'll get into the proposal a little bit in a second, but I think <clears throat> before that I wanted to have Josh who's on the call here, give a bit of background on himself, who is, has been an advisor with us for some, some time. And you know, we're, we're excited to. <clears throat> you know, structure a rally grant for him that we think is, you know, very, very exciting to do some really interesting stuff in the music space, but yeah, Josh, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Mahesh. Um, hey everyone. So let me introduce myself. My name is Josh Katz. I've been in the music industry for quite a number of years. I started off back in the mid nineties as a concert promoter, upstate New York grew out to be actually a pretty large one. And then I spent a decade in the recorded music business, dropped like responsible or involved with tons of hip hop albums, a lot of rock albums. I actually was involved in launching Britney Spears and NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, if any of you know who those people even are from back in the day, I'm a lot of that candy pop. And kind of at that point in 2003, I moved out of the traditional music business and I found, I was a founder of a company called EL Media Group. EL Media Group became the largest in venue network provider. So we were basically before EL media, there was something called Muzak where you go into a restaurant and they'd be like pumping like remakes of pop songs on flutes and stuff, you know, like classical music. And we saw kind of pioneered like good music going into hotel lobbies and restaurants and casinos and all that. So, you know, I gained quite, you know, back in like, you know, I'd say 2015 or so kind of got, you know, deep into the crypto space and I'm um, actually ended up exiting EL media in 2017. And I started a company called yellow heart. Yellow heart was conceived as a decentralized ticketing platform where we were launching NFTs, uh, fully programmable with smart contracts in order to eradicate scalping 11 and a half billion a year that goes through secondary ticketing markets in the U S between sports, concerts, theater. So we built that out in order to basically launch tickets as NFTs, you know, programmable, you know, contracts and, you know, our NFTs were media rich contacts, really media rich files that are programmable literally down to a single seat section and allows stakeholders to pull back secondary revenue and program how those tickets behave. So putting caps on tickets, putting rules on tickets, you might call them, or the ability, frankly, for tickets to flow, flow freely through marketplaces and stakeholders that stakeholders to actually share in that secondary revenue pool. So, you know, a Pearl Jam could share in that lift if they wanted to, or just eliminate it. So this year with, you know, obviously concerts coming to a halt, Yellow Heart kind of got stopped and we kind of looked at our whole place in the NFT space. My team's a very smart team. We've been building in the NFT space for, you know, for over three years now. And we saw this summer as the space kind of exploded and we realized we were very uniquely positioned where we have great blockchain expertise and we know kind of the world of crypto and blockchain, but we also know the entertainment business and the music space. And my partners in Yellow Heart are uh, Alex and Drew, who are the chain smokers, professionally known. Their manager, Adam, who's a senior exec at Sony. One of our other stakeholders is an executive v VP of Atlantic Records. 
Live Nation is our main source of funding. So, you know, collectively, we find ourselves in a unique position where since the summer, I've been spending a significant amount of time really educating rockers and rappers and people in music and entertainment around what blockchain is, first of all, almost like blockchain 101. And now, like, what are NFTs? And now, of course, what are creator coins? So we're spending a significant amount of time and I'm finding that without the education, there really would not be a lot of like these larger creators stepping up. I've had to spend a significant amount of time and we've actually at Yellowheart created what we call NFT 101, which is almost like NFT for dummies that we've been kind of been showing um, to all types of artist managers and agents and all types of people in entertainment. So the whole, we kind of woke up, you know, I brought, you know, Portugal, the man in, you know, as part of rally. And obviously we did the PTM launch and through that experience and a couple of other NFT things that I'm working on, we realized internally that we should really have an agency and that agency can kind of bridge the gap between creatives and their lack of knowledge around technology and help onboard projects. And we actively started pursuing projects a few weeks ago and the pipeline has actually gotten insane. We're talking to like one of the biggest iconic rock bands right now. You know, we're going to be looking to onboard another creator coin actually later today, Mahesh and I. So we're actively kind of working in the space and think we could become a real asset to a uh, rally and creator coin in going around and educating all types of people within the entertainment business and frankly, just onboarding people and getting them comfortable around the fact that this is where they need to be. And if they're missing out on being on rally and creator coin or whether, you know, something for them might through this agency, there might be a better fit for them to do something on super rare or, or nifty or wherever it might fit. But the whole point is that we're going to kind of craft blockchain plans for these musicians and artists. The ones that fit with creator coin, of course, are going to be pushed immediately into creator coin. I actually have a whole pipeline of people that we're going to hopefully onboard the next, you know, few weeks and months. So that's, that's pretty much the proposal. That's where we stand. You know, just to give you guys a sense, you know, yellow heart, I think on the ticketing front, will start to come back later this year. We're actually working on a very music centric NFT project as well, where I'm hoping in the next 90 to 120 days, we launch a marketplace and onboarding system for musicians that will be very specific to music based NFTs, which we're super excited about, but the agency fits in perfectly where we're really sitting as, as an inner section between talent and the platforms. And, you know, that's the proposal. So I'll just kind of end it by saying that my experience thus far with everyone at Rally, with Kevin and Mahesh, you know, and Kurt and, you know, the whole Portugal, the man token experience has been incredible. It's been amazing. I've never been more excited about a platform before in my entire career and see the potential here for what we're doing. So thrilled to be part of this. And I really hope, you know, this community will support our agency as we go forward. So thank you all. Cool. Yes. Appreciate you. And uh, Grant, if you go to the next slide, I can provide a little bit more context. So yeah, taking a step back, as we think about the rally ecosystem, you know, you've got first, second and third party developer projects, but <clears throat> there's also an opportunity to build all sorts of businesses right on top of rally. And so that's what we're trying to figure out with, you know, Josh Katz's new, new agency. So I think right now working with Josh is a great opportunity. Like we're really trailblazing here. Like no, nobody's really done this. And so what we're hoping to do with this grant is to uh, work with someone who has an awesome background like him that we also trust and has already worked with us you know, to develop a playbook for, you know, what, what is, what does it look like to build an agency on, on top of rally? And so we landed on doing an initial grant, as you, as you see here of 250 K rally tokens, as well as a scaling grant that's contingent on Josh's agency complete, completing a fundraise. And there would be a kind of a 50% matching amount. <clears throat> and the reason we, we landed on this was because, you know, we could, we could give a, a, you know, a big grant to anybody, but I think right now, as we're trailblazing here, it's hard, for, it'll be hard for the community to measure and figure out wh what this person should be doing and holding them accountable. And we, we were thinking that the best proxy for alignment is actually to have uh, somebody like Josh raise outside funding, where this is like an actual business that he's building and taking career risk on. And, you know, he's got uh, investors that he's beholden to which is in, in some ways makes it a lot more real than just getting a grant from a community where no matter how hard we were, you know, trying to, trying to manage, you know, ma manage a, a, a business like this, 
it could always just it could always just just fizzle, right? It's just not the same level of accountability. And so we thought this was like a great first test. And I, there's certainly a healthy debate on what the right structure is, what the right amount is, you know, what are the right KPIs, you know, to measure a program like this over time. But I think this is a good start, and I can envision a future where you know full business plans are being submitted and 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 vetted entirely by the community. And so you know, a little bit looser on this one as we figure out what the learnings are, what's working, what's not working. But over time, we really want to like tighten these types of things up more and more. And so, you know, I'm personally working really, really close with Josh to to learn as much as we can, fine tune as much as we can, and, you know, hopefully have a lot more successful launches like Portugal Demand. Can I add to that for a sec, guys? Sure. Um, you know, I just think that, you know, I'm part of this community now, and clearly it's early, and we're all just kind of getting ready to, we're launching off now. So I really want to also go into this with the approach that, you know, I'm happy to be the rally guinea pig around how these programs work going forward and we we have an amazing you know access to talent and you know listen the reality is is i've spoken to some of the biggest rappers right now and they're they're all you know now they all know what rally is because i've taken them through it and showed them the video and everything but you know these are people that are asking me for you know advances and things that just we're not going to do but the point is is that we're getting the word out there and i think that you know, that's going to be pretty important. And I think there's going to be a lot more of these programs that you got that, you know, we're all going to want to do. And I think that, you know, this early one, I'm happy to kind of make it very flexible where as we're going and we're, you know, through this community and we're doing these calls week to week and, you know, giving updates, you know, letting it, letting it kind of be, become the template for more to come and more, you know, more of this. So. Yep. Sounds good. Well, thanks, Josh. We appreciate your, your time and looking forward to getting going here. All right. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Well, that concludes our agenda. We still have, uh, I think we still have Vibe on, Dan, and we also have Josh on. So if there's any questions for any of those two of our guest speakers, any of the speakers today from Rally, we can go and open the uh, chat up for any questions that you guys may have. Okay. Well, if there's no questions, thank you guys for speaking today. Thank you, Josh. We're really excited to be working with you. Um, we're really excited yeah. to see what's coming. And then also Vibe, if, I don't know if you're still in here, but Dan, right. thank you speaking with us. Uh, that was really, really nice insight on how well your coin's doing and we're excited to see it keep growing. Nice. Thank you guys. Thank you, Dan. Awesome. Well, that concludes our first February community call. We will be back here at the same place, same time next week. So we'll see you guys then. So have a good weekend, guys. Thank you. Bye, everybody. See y'all.